Hi, I'm Satin Brownie, and this is Finding Happy Podcast. Finding Happy Podcast is my journey to discovering my own happiness through conversations with other persons who inspire me in one way or another. This podcast is about connecting with self to create possibilities and opportunities for happiness. You deserve peace of mind. You deserve wellness. You deserve laughter. You deserve to smile. You deserve peace of mind. You deserve calm in your world. Your life isn't happening to you. You are life. Your happiness is not something you attain. You are. You generate happiness. You are your joy. You are the producer of your joy. You are the producer of your happiness. You deserve to be happy. So you go find it. Go find your happy at any cost. Risk it all for your own happiness. Find your happy. Good, good day. I am Satin Brownie and welcome to my podcast. Thank you for joining me. This is Finding Happy. Finding Happy podcast. I am feeling, I'm feeling amazing. How are you? I hope you are fantastic. I hope you are phenomenal. I hope you're feeling amazing. I hope you're breathing well. I hope you, um, you, you take the time to feel the oxygen coming through your nostrils and per, um, permeating your body. You know, I, I, I hope that you are living in the present. I hope you are aware of your fingers and your toes and your smile and, um, you know, just the wellness of yourself and the, the energy, your energy. I hope you're aware of your energy. I, I hope today you feel good. I hope you feel really good today. I hope something amazing happened to you today. You listening to this podcast right now. You know what I hope? I hope you get a, a surprise smile. <laughs> I hope somebody surprise you today and, and it just gives you the biggest smiles. And for all the leaders out there, and you're all leaders, you lead from where you are. But especially for those people who function in um, titled leadership positions. You know what my wish is for you today? My wish for you today is amazing mindfulness. My wish for you today is laughter. My wish for you today is kindness. Someone be kind to you, be nice to you, be thoughtful to you. I hope you get a nice embrace. And if you don't get it, I hope you, you embrace someone. Um, and feel the connection of your bodies. And I hope it makes you smile. I wish all titled leaders today an amazing, phenomenal day. Today, we're going to be speaking with <laughs> a youth leader that I have I've admired. She is very lovely, always pleasant. She's always pleasant. I've never seen her not smiling. Her name is Ruth Lawrence. She is such an amazing person. And um, we're going to be having her on the program today talking about mindfulness in leadership. But before we go to her, let me just share. I read an article on Forbes.com. And I always go to Forbes. I, I love their thoughts <laughs> that they share on the website. And I really like the stories. The I, I love the, the, the positive messages in their stories. So I'm just going to be sharing um, snippets from it, excerpts from the article. The article was written by Monica Fakrar. And... Um, she is the president of MTI, a leadership training, coaching, and consulting firm. The title of the article, which was written June 28, 2017, or at least that's when it was published, um, the title is How to Create Mindful Leadership. So the case of mindfulness, the article says, large companies such as Google, Atna, and General Mills have been implementing large-scale mindfulness programs over the past few years. 
thousands of employees have gone through their program with data now showing that that there is a definite impact on leadership skills by practicing mindfulness such as increase in productivity increase in decision making increase in listening reduction in stress levels but for leaders it says the biggest benefit of mindfulness is its direct impact on the development of emotional intelligence. Daniel Goleman, a leading expert on emotional intelligence, recently made a direct connection between mindfulness and emotional in intelligence, saying that emotional intelligence builds attention and focus. Attention and focus are cornerstones in enhancing self-awareness as well as empathy. Self-awareness and empathy are critical skills to enhancing emotional awareness. Google's mindfulness program, the article continues, focuses directly on the link between mindfulness and emotional intelligence, and it's had some significant traction with employees. Mindfulness tools include meditation, breathing, yoga, walking, music, nature, anything that allows you to come back to the present moment. Our minds are often thinking about regrets, incidents from the past, and worries about the future. Any tool that brings the mind back to the present moment is a mindfulness tool. I have, there, there, there are a couple of tools that I use myself that helps me stay in the moment. And I'll just share it with you. There's the app, it's, on, it's in Play Store. It's called Calm. And I'm telling you, this Calm app, it, it, um, it, it gives you access to different uh, materials like meditation material programs. So for example, it has seven days of calm program. Um, it also gives you meditation exercises, sleeping exercises. You even have where you can have, um, you can listen to a reading as you fall asleep. Um, it also gives you little messages that comes. It's so amazing because when I started my foundation, Go Inspire Jamaica Foundation, I actually created an app for it where I would send messages to uh, via the app every morning, like about six o'clock in the morning. So the persons who have the app could get that message to start off their day. And so he, and I wasn't able to maintain it due to financial constraints, but here I, I found some apps that are already out there and available. Calm is one of them. And the other one is them of them that I also use. I don't remember the name. I think it's called Law of Attraction that I also use. And what that is, is like a, it gives you daily quotes that you can read and you can um, just feel inspired as you go throughout your day. And I also have one called 365 Gratitude. And that is really, it has like a 21 days of gratitude program um, along with other things. And I just find those things very important and interesting because it keeps me connected. What I also do is I love nature. Like I say it all the time, the rain, rain is my favorite, absolutely favorite element. Like it's my favorite weather. There's, there's nothing that lights me up more than feeling the rain against my, falling against my skin. Sometimes I go outside and I dance in the rain, literally, right? And I love feeling the ground, the dirt, the grass, touching my, 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 my feet, my skin. I, I love to feel that. I love to touch the trees that I like to crush the leaves in my palms and feel it. I, I love natural. I have fallen in love with just natural things. There, there is something spiritual, I think, that happens, a, a spiritual calming. Uh, it, it does something amazing. So I, I, when we're in leadership, we have to stay connected. Or we, or we become so disconnected that even the people who we are trying to lead can't reach us because we are disconnected, okay? So we're going to speak with Ruth Lawrence now, and believe me, it, I know it's going to be a thrilling conversation because she's just that kind of person. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you so much, Ruth, for being on our program. Welcome. Is that better? Yes, I'm actually hearing it better, yes. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So I was saying welcome to my podcast, 
finding happy. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you because I love I am a, youth leaders. I am ecstatic. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Did you get a chance to hear any of the episodes yet? If you didn't, it's okay. Yes, I did you actually. Did? I listened okay. to the first one that you had with the ah. young lady. I don't oh, remember Keisha. her name, but she, Keisha, right? Yes. Where she left her job as a teacher. Yes. I'm a lawyer and, you know, mm -hmm. her quit finding yes. herself and her purpose yes i had an opportunity as well to listen briefly not in mm -hmm. uh in its entirety but the yes. uh, clipping by garfield burford oh okay oh yes. it started out um yes. you know in media and mm -hmm. you know the finding purpose in what he did so yeah. i didn't get a chance to complete it but i started <laughs> that's okay on thursday we're going live on my facebook page with it no problem, no problem. <laughs> Fantastic, because I wanted to have you directly after hers. Oh, nice. Yes, because after I heard her interview, I was like, man, mm -hmm. I would love to have Ruth have a conversation because what happened is I know what you do. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the impact of the youth leadership is not felt in the rural areas, mm -hmm. but it's not as strong right. as in Kingston. That's true. So I wanted to expose, because I told her, I have somebody who I'm going to interview that I'm going to make sure I send you the interview so you can hear. It can okay. be different elsewhere. There are youth leaders that are, that are out there that's working hard, that's, that's doing the thing, you know? Absolutely. But yeah, so <laughs> all that good stuff. So I'm happy you got a chance to, to, to hear it. So um, yeah. I'll just tell you the principles upon which the podcast exists, right? Okay. So the podcast is really my journey that I'm taking to find my own happiness, right? Uh, mm -hmm. In 2016, I made a decision um, to be happy. Mm -hmm. Because most of my life, I was, I was driven by my need to survive. Mm -hmm. And after 35 years of real, I, 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 of real unhappiness, Right. I decided no more. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be happy, no matter what. So I started traveling more. I started a yeah. travel blog. I started my ASMR videos. And then I, I've been asked so many questions because I'm now a certified coach, life and Ah, and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> based on the many questions that kept coming to me and the many conversations I was finding myself in with persons, I decided to start the podcast so okay. I can share my perspectives and others can share theirs too. So mm -hmm. it's really just having conversations with persons to, to speak right. with just to hear their perspectives as well. So the three principles are thoughts, feelings, and actions. Mm. And thoughts, right? Thoughts being our creation, the thing, the seeds that we plant um, and are on earth from, from within and who we are right and then you have your feelings which is the meanings and the beliefs we assign to the thoughts that we create of uh -huh. whatever's happening around us and then the actions are the the manifestation of the habits that we create we develop from the feelings that we generate from our thoughts so when we talk about thoughts it really is right. the determinant of our outcome of who we become of our success of everything about us. And that's the premise. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. It's just, that's the premise of the podcast. Right? So, ah. yeah. Ah, so, lovely. yeah, thank you. I invited you as my special guest because I've seen you at work, but also I saw you travel to India. Mm. And thereafter, I don't know, you could have been doing it before. And I just started yes. recognizing them afterward. But afterwards, I saw where you were posting <laughs> books. And, you know, inspiration, I mean, you, you, I saw something, I saw, I saw growth, I saw an empowerment, not that it wasn't there before, but I, there was something that was mm. so unique about it. There was an intentionality. Yes, yes. And so I mm. wanted to, to have that conversation with you. Before we go any further, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, say who you are, mm. what you do. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, uh, as I stated, I'm Ruth Lawrence. Mm -hmm. I am a youth empowerment officer with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. So in particular, uh, my job really allows me to work, the privilege rather, to work alongside youth leaders 
all across the island. I am the national coordinator for the student sponsor program in Jamaica. So uh, at, since the age of 22, I've been working assiduously uh, with the ministry. Prior to that, I actually volunteered with them for about five years while I was in uh, college. Well, transitioning from high school to college, I volunteered with them. So it was rather a smooth transitioning into mm -hmm. the professional. The power of mm -hmm. volunteerism. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I have been doing. Uh, I, I also am a business owner. I do operate my own business, nice. uh, training and empowerment uh, service business. Love and it. of course, my mission over the, the, the past couple of years is to ensure that people are motivated and empowered because I do realize that we reside in a time where many persons are disempowered and people mm -hmm. lack vision for their lives. And as such, I believe that a part of my mission here on earth <laughs> mm -hmm. is to ensure that people maximize their fullest potential. And that's one of the things that I have been very intentional about. And as you rightly said, I have been reading more. I have been saturating myself with more information because I believe that if you are to impact people's lives in a way where it, it makes a difference, you have to first have that encounter. And that's really where my intentionality is right now. So yeah, I mean, there's many other there are many other things I could probably state about myself, but I just wanted to add that tidbit. So wow. I'm passionate about development uh, of our young people. I love the you use the word intentional, and uh, in my book Finding Happy, I have mm -hmm. the seven rules of intention. Mm -hmm. I love that word. I do. I hope our listeners even understand the power in that word. Mm -hmm. And how did you get here? How did you get to this point where you, you, you have a grasp on intention and mm -hmm. how to execute it and manifest it? How did you get to this place? To be honest, it's, it's a journey and I'm still, I'm still on the journey because I do believe that there at no point in time we will ever arrive. You know, it's a continuous process. Really and truly, I believe my life started to change in the latter part of 2016 when I just decided that I no longer wanted to remain the person that I, I was evolving into. And that was someone who lacked vision. That was someone who lacked focus. So even though I was very productive in my professional life, in my personal life, I wanted to see more growth. I saw persons who were younger than me, uh, excelling and doing extremely well. Persons who I would have mentored or, or you know, tutored, mm -hmm. you know, would have surpassed. And, and though it is that I was very happy to play a part in their lives, I too wanted that uh, transformation. I too wanted and craved for that, uh, you know, continuous development. And as such, I started on a quest just to find me, find myself. Uh, I didn't realize that I, I was meandering, not understanding who I really was. And it really opened uh, a, a, a bit of a journey for me to understand who I am, what I've been put here to do, you know? And mm -hmm. since 2015, 2016, I started to read more. I got hooked on a book, The Purpose Driven Life. Right. Pastor Rick Warren. And I believe <laughs> that that book really opened up the path, mm -hmm. the growth and development that I now see. Because I was on a quest, as I said before, to find my purpose, find really God, why am I here, Lord? <laughs> you know, it couldn't be to just suck up your hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Something else, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And out of that, I said, you know, Lord, I really want to find out why it is that you put me here in the first place. Many things have happened in my life, but I want to know what, what can I do to make not only a difference in people's lives, but in even my life. Yes. And I started to read more. It was from one book to the next. I literally I developed know. an insatiable appetite for reading to the yes. point that people probably think I might be getting a little, you know, off the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what reading does, you know. It's yes. like from one book to the next. And I was really passionate about 
growth. I wanted yes. to grow. I wanted to learn more. I didn't just want to exist anymore. Wow. And I think that was one of the things that, that, that kind of propelled me to yes. really seek and to develop self. That's yes. powerful. That's powerful. Because I know you have seen books on there from John Maxwell on leadership. Oh, absolutely. Um, T.D. Jakes, Identity yes. and Soar, Sarah yep. Jakes Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. And every time I saw the book, I was like, yes, enlightenment. <laughs> like, I, could, like, I could feel it because you know what? It mm -hmm. happened for me in 2016 too. For mm -hmm. me, what happened with me is my life flipped upside down. And I mean, yeah. upside down. And mm -hmm. that's because I'm a Jonah. Yeah. God will tell me what to do. And I'm using God because I know, because you used it too. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, 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 you know, he's constantly, because like you i was that person too who was work 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 i completely neglected me it was uh, never about me and so that was what happened for me too and that same book um the purpose driven life i read it too wow <laughs> and, it went, nice. yes. and it still <laughs> took me it still took me another couple of months to really um so, see what god was doing in my life and i had to just let go I had to just right, let right. go, and, and that was how I started. Well, I, I was traveling before, but I started seeing the meaning and the purpose in my traveling, and I started blogging about it. Did your trip to India awaken or further awaken things in you, these things? Absolutely, it did. I would say further awaken because I, mm -hmm. I had already started on a path uh, for transformation. Uh, not reformation. I think a lot of the times we tend to look at just the reform, but really and truly re reformation speaks to an alteration of what already exists. Right. So I started a quest to transform me. There were some inner things within me in, in terms of how I thought, in terms of my actions that I didn't like. I didn't quite like. I didn't like how people got under my skin, you know? I had to deal with certain issues of self and going to India really put things into perspective because I, I got an opportunity, a first-hand opportunity to watch how people lived mm -hmm. i think for us here in jamaica we might think that you know we are the worst of the worst for mm -hmm. example, you know because <laughs> of how we live and you know yeah. our daily realities mm -hmm. but when i went there it really put things into perspective that yeah. what we take for granted here Ooh. is literally mm -hmm. uh, the Put treasures of the world on. absolutely mm -hmm. you know so for that it really and, and my lecturer too uh professor ganesh he really instilled some really uh critical um life lessons every time we had classes and everything was surrounding humility and mm -hmm. understanding self uh, mm -hmm. and that really helped me to, to look at who i am because i didn't recognize that i was prideful Mm. I, I thought I was fine. I thought I was, you know, I was okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that I was, I was struggling because of past issues that I would have encountered. I struggled, right. with pride. I struggled with trying to be somebody or, you know, allowing people to acknowledge and recognize that I am somebody. So mm. I sought a lot of external validation rather than validating self, you know? So that really helped to change my life and my trajectory in terms of loving and understanding self more and seeking <laughs> to be the best version of myself. So I tell you, and even studying the, the, the philosophies of, of, of Mahatma Gandhi too, ah, helped me to understand, I'm nice. telling you, it was transformational. Wow. Helped me to understand that my life, and that's one of his quotes, my life is my message. Mm. And it really spoke to me that, listen, every day when I get up, when God gives me the opportunity to breathe his breath, it's not to just exist, it's to make an impact in the world. And that, for me, really helped to transform my way of thinking, being, and existing. Wow. Wow. That is wonderful. And you know, oh, that is so powerful, Ruth. It is. It's really powerful because traveling did that for me too uh. in 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 coaching i the first thing i teach my clients is selfishness uh. and it's not just about wanting but caring about uh. self 
Absolutely. And understanding and unearthing who am I? What am I here for? I didn't create myself. And what led to you? I, you, you spoke about not liking what you were seeing manifesting, you were manifesting. Was there anything, how does one, another young person who's listening, because for a young person, you, you sound so profound, so mm. profound, and that's a compliment to you, so you. profound. And I'm saying that because mm -hmm. I have quite a bit of young persons who are my clients. And they're not where you are yet. How did you get to the point where what you're pretty much doing is owning your truth? How did you get to that place where you're able to touch what, what, what was not as you want it to be? That manifestation, how did it get to the point to, to make it so tangible to yourself so you could fix it? Uh, well, one of the things I can give uh, the highest credit too and that's mm -hmm. that's jesus christ i mean yes. he makes the difference in my life mm -hmm. um for example as i said before there was a point in my life where i was literally drowning wow. i didn't know how to exist i didn't know why i was here i i struggled with who i was as an individual and i did i really just didn't know and i remember one day i said to god i said god i need you to help me i wow. don't know what to do so i need your help and literally i can tell you what the lord started to do in me is that he changed my diet and wow. some people may say oh did you start eating healthier <laughs> actually let me let me explain diet yes. i changed my mental diet yes I change my mental diet because you see, the thing is, you know, we can exercise all we want. Mm -hmm. We can, you know, eat healthy all we Mindfulness. want. Mindfulness. But mm -hmm. we have to first learn that in order for us to become the person that God has destined for us to be, we first have to change our mental diet. Absolutely. And what I did, I started to uh listen and yes i'm a christian and I, i'm not new to preaching i'm not new to affirmation i'm not new to that because mm -hmm. i mean the bible speaks a lot about it but i became again intentional what i did mm. certain negativity that i would entertain i stopped yes. certain friends that you know couldn't speak anything but negativity i just cut them out right yes. so what i did i i literally absorbed I became so absorbed in listening to uplifting messages, Les Brown, T.D. Jakes, mm. and these are persons who yes. you can speak to, Lisa Nichols. Uh, I started to absorb myself in motivational speakers who spoke yes. to my spirit. Not yes. only that, but what too, what worked for me as well was affirmation, writing out mm -hmm. my affirmation. Mm -hmm. I remember what was so profound when I was in India. Uh, it was about one o'clock in the morning. I got up, I couldn't sleep, and I heard in my spirit, start writing what you want to see. Oh my goodness. I was like, I was like, I was like, listen, who else is in yes. this room? Like, yes. anyway, you're in a foreign land and you hear a voice. Trust me, he speaks right to what me. you want to see. And I'm telling you, yes. like, I literally started to look around and I was like, I know the voice of God. And I said, okay, <laughs> yes. Lord, I got up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I grabbed my pen and I grabbed my notebook my notebook and i just started to write i am wow. powerful i am not pitiful I absolutely am, i am whatever whatever and i just started to write from my heart wow. i didn't see a lot of the things then mm -hmm. but the thing is that you have to speak things into being absolutely and, and every night before i went to my bed and i i deliberately went to bed at 12 o'clock every night and I, I spoke those things into the atmosphere. Wow. And I looked at myself in the, in the mirror and I spoke to myself. Absolutely. You are blessed. I am smart. I am intelligent. Yes. I, am, I, I just started to, to yes. do the, the eye affirmation. Yes. And that's really what made, that, 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 that was one of the major turning points in my life. Because we have to understand that our minds, mm -hmm. people will say bad things about us, you know. But we tend to believe more about what we say about ourselves than anybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I changed my mental diet by feeding wow. myself that 
I can do it. I am, I am the best. I am, and I just started to speak what I wanted to see. And some people may say, but, uh, you know, it will cause you to become absorbed in self. No, when you are at a point where you are struggling with self, you need to reaffirm self. And, and selfishness is a good thing. Narcissism Absolutely. is a bad thing. Absolutely. You confuse Absolutely. the two. The two, absolutely. And, and, it wasn't, powerful. and it wasn't about being, you know, braggadocious or, you know, just saying, ah, uh, I am this sorry. No, it wasn't anything like that. It was really uh, calling into being my Godfidence. Not even confidence, but my mm-hmm. Godfidence. It was calling <laughs> into being the person that God called me, created me to be before the foundation of this earth. It was calling that person to come into play right now in my presence. Wow, that's powerful. I got to the place where I write even my prayers. Mm -hmm. I Ah, realized that when I was praying, I was so unconsciously praying, I Mm. didn't even really know what I was praying about. I had Mm. to write my thoughts down to make sure that my prayers were being effective. How do you bring this, how do you bring this mindfulness to your leadership? Uh, mindfulness is, is, and I love the topic, by the way, Raquel, it's, it's very timely and relevant. Uh, when you think about mindfulness, I, I think uh, that came into perspective for me this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I participated in the GMMB, they have what a training called the Conversation for Greatness. And it really looks at self in its entirety because, yes, I started the journey uh, a couple of years before, but I became I I became a little bit more mindful Mm -hmm. (laughs) as to why I I do what I, you know, do in life. Yes. And where mindfulness is concerned, we have to understand that mindfulness tends to put things into perspective. It tends to not only put ourselves into perspective, but also the perspective of other people, the paradigm of other people. I love that word. Yeah, absolutely. Because the paradigm is how you see the world. The paradigm is shaped by your experiences in life. Mm -hmm. And so how you interpret those experiences. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yes. And we all know how many persons tend to misinterpret yes. uh, facts versus their interpretation. Mm-hmm. So all of those pointers came out in that training. And I realized too that many a times, many of the relationships that I self sabotaged, it wasn't because of the other person, it was because of my own paradigm. Powerful. And I had to realize that I had to move out of that judgmental space into a space of non-judgment. And this is both for self and others. And I think a lot of the times we tend to put ourselves in prison because of the mistakes that we have made, not thinking that we can literally create a new slate for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have failed. Yes, you have probably made some bad decisions, but you can turn a new leaf and you can recover, you can bounce back. But many persons don't think that way. They believe that because they failed, they are a failure. But right. we have to understand that an occurrence, a failure is merely an, an, an occurrence. It doesn't define who yes. you are. And I always say fail forward. Absolutely. Fail forward. What we do, what we, mm-hmm. do we tend to allow that occurrence to become mm-hmm. general uh, way in how we see life, oh, in how we yes. do everything. It becomes our definition. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. And yeah. I realized I was trapped in that paradigm. And yeah. I was very judgmental of other people, not realizing that my judgment of people was because of my own internal judgment of self. Yes. It's uh, always connected. Self self. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So I had to come. I'm telling you, when I finished that training, I cried tears. Wow. I didn't know that all of this was bottled in, bottled up in me. I didn't know. Yeah. I thought I was perfect. I thought I was on my way to glory. I thought people just needed, you know, to be more like me. I was <laughs> yes. good. Yes, yes. But that training really stripped me down to the core wow. in understanding understanding that I wasn't the perfect person I thought I was mm-hmm. and nobody is and we will never no be one. no one is yes mm-hmm. 
What we need to be is intentional about becoming better. And that's my question since then, till now. I love that because you see, I, I learned God had to show me failure for me to understand Mm. and embrace failure. And Mm -hmm. it's so funny because I was so OCD in managing everything that he had to, he had to send an unreal version of failure for me to Mm -hmm. get it because it wasn't real. It wasn't what it was. It wasn't factual, but it was Mm -hmm. necessary. Mm. And now I live a life embraced. Mm. I'm just waiting for my next failure because after that failure, Mm. gosh, like if you just stop and, and, and just let it happen, there's this, I always say when you're going through a tunnel, don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel until you have found the diamond within. Don't get past that failure until mm. you figure out what that failure is for. It's your wisdom. Mm, absolutely. The failure is your wisdom. Mm. What you're oh, sharing absolutely. now is an insight that I'm telling you, having just started, because I didn't even realize that persons were coming to me a long time ago for coaching. I didn't know coaching was what I was doing until my coach said to me, yes, child, that's what you're doing. You've been doing it, <laughs> right? I just yeah. didn't know the term. I didn't know the name. I didn't know what to call it, mm. right? But when you discover it, and so what you have, it, your, your experience and what you're speaking about is a level of insight that a lot of persons have not yet found. How do you, Mm. through your leadership, spread this light? Uh, Well, one of the things I have done, and and to be honest, it was never in my scope at all to do. (laughs) Uh, I have started started to use my my social media platform as, you know, just a conduit to spread the word. Mm -hmm. For example, for the month of October, I am actually on a series, Let It Go. And that's really confronting our past and embracing the future that God has. So I've been using my platform to spread the message, you know, and not only that, I do have one-on-one, as you rightly said, you didn't know that you had coaching inside of you because Mm -hmm. it's something that came naturally. (laughs) I didn't know. I think from, I was probably in primary school I've always yeah. been encouraging people I didn't really take it for nothing I just yeah. feel like I <laughs> just, talk a lot you yeah. know <laughs> I think it's yeah. I probably love to Me talk too. You know? <laughs> but now coming into my adult life yeah. I realize that it is indeed a gift it is you know it and is. it's not something to it's not something to take for granted it's True. not something to use uh to manipulate because people do use this uh yes. this, this gift yes. and this uh privilege to manipulate yes. and i have come to the realization that it's not to manipulate it's not to cause people to have you on a pedestal it's it's for you to be able for god to use you rather to yes. influence to impact the life because that's what mm. leadership is all about leadership is yes. all about influence if you have no influence on people, you are There's not a no leader. leader. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So with leadership comes responsibility. And yes. I think that that's where many persons who claim or, you know, to be leaders don't absolutely. understand. The that being a leader, part. absolutely, mm-hmm. it requires you being responsible. And accountable. And accountable, absolutely. Yeah. Do you see, yes, absolutely. Do you see um, um, mindfulness? being manifested in our leadership um, from, from where you sit. Do you see it manifesting where it's present? Manifest, uh, in, in what regard? In, in general? general in, in, in leadership around you, whether it's leadership of the country, leadership in small spaces, just from where you sit, from your vantage point, do you see mindfulness in leadership? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, I would say that it exists, yes. definitely. However, uh, I believe that it needs to be amplified. Yes. And uh, I think the, as a result of it not necessarily being amplified is, is persons not really being open to understanding self and right. persons uh, not coming, coming from rather a, a place of spirit or love, mm-hmm. but rather a place of ego. Yes. And yes. I think as soon as we can differentiate the two, spirit, mm-hmm. love, versus ego, yes. um, we will be in a better position. I think many persons right now 
may start out in good intentions in terms yes. of a difference. However, not understanding uh, power and how to manage power, uh, you can actually be placed in a state where you seek to manipulate mm -hmm. rather than uh, positively impact. Right, right. Or, posit or positively seek out change. So yeah. I think a lot of the times where when we look at leadership, yes. it, 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 it's almost like a, a block in the, child of a, in the hand of a child. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be managed because the capacity has not been developed. And I, and I mm -hmm. encourage my youth leaders all the time that, listen, even though you may have a drive uh, and people may say you are an excellent leader, check mm -hmm. your internal character. Yes. Check your character. Because yes. if your character does not line up over time, you mm -hmm. will corrupt or you yes. will be become corrupted. So right. I always tell them, be very mindful of why it is you do what you do and who you are serving. Right, and, and I and I think introspection too uh, is something that I I, I I I do a lot. Yes, yes. I didn't used to do it, but yes. I believe that even if we look at the natural, because the Bible says so in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Absolutely. If we look at a car uh, that we own, we can't just drive that car every <laughs> exactly. day. Exactly, you have to we service it. Drive. We just drive. <laughs> yes. You know, there comes a time when we have yeah. to take that car to the shop and Absolutely. say, "Listen, we need an oil change. We need to change the brakes. We need to get a total. You know, so we need that time yes. off the road. But yes. many of us just keep going, so we don't mm -hmm. take the time to introspect. We don't take the time to take that." Uh, that that, that inventory of self, yes. that self inventory to say, you know, this is where I am. This this affected me negatively. How, how, how I reacted, it wasn't yes. so wise. So in the next uh, time, should this happen again, this is how I would want to act. Right. But inventory is is also important. And absolutely, because you see, some of us don't know our own names beyond writing it down or introducing oh, yeah. ourselves. I mean, oh, wow. you're not saying hi, Ruth, every day unless you deliberately and intentionally get up and say, hey, I'm awake, I'm yeah. here. So I always, I've learned the two most important investment is therapy and coaching. For me anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me anyway. <laughs> you know, because I'm telling you, if you don't know who you are, you are missing out on your happiness. You are oh. missing out on your power. You are missing out on the diamond that is mm -hmm. The diamond that is you. Mm -hmm. Understanding what mindfulness is and how insightful you are. How do you think mindfulness or a lack of it can potentially affect governance of people, not of a country, but of people? <laughs> of people. Yes. Uh, mindfulness in that regard, I do believe, would come from a place of wanting to understand yes. there is a saying that says first seek to, to understand, understand absolutely yes even yeah. our COVID. <laughs> so many a times we find that we want to we want to push on other people or we agendas want force on other people or agenda we want for them to understand us you know, mm -hmm. but really where the magic lies, where the, the, the death to self really uh, mm -hmm. comes into play is when we seek to understand the person that we are, that we serve. Yes. Right? That we are serving. Mm -hmm. Understanding from a, from, a, from a place of, from a place of goodwill too. What mm -hmm. affects them? You know, why does it affect them? How can you help that person? To, to become the best but what you find is that many persons want to use the people as pedestals yes uh, uh, to stand upon rather than to seek out ways and means to elevate people while you rise yourself yes yes you know it's that it's finding that balance that middle ground to ensuring that while i if i go up on level two you're gonna be coming up on level two too mm -hmm. you know it's not that i'm gonna be on level two and you're you're still gonna remain at one no right it's ensuring that while you grow that other persons feed from you yes and yes can learn but because when we come from a state of ego mm -hmm. ego is very selfish ego oh, yeah. wants to 
all. Ego wants everything to uh, resound, you know, reside around that yes. uh, particular individual yes. and not seeking to help other people. So that is why I always tell people, please to take introspection of self. Yes, yes. And when you introspect, you can object. And if you are objective with self, rather, you'll be able to identify, am I coming from a place of ego where yes. it's just me, 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 me? Or am I coming from a place where I sincerely want to help people? And this mm -hmm. is not in a bid either to neglect self, but mm -hmm. it's also taking, a, taking that time to put self a little bit on the back burner. Yeah especially from the standpoint of leadership, because remember yes. you're at the forefront, mm -hmm. right? And which, whichever wrong turn you take, it's going to affect your yes. boss. It's going to affect the people who are following you. And therefore there, it, it has, it requires of us that level of responsibility. What is the, how is your ability to respond to changes? How is your ability to respond to the needs of people? That's what responsibility really means, yes. you know? Yes. What shows your ability to respond? You yes. know, many of us really don't have the ability wow. to respond. Because <laughs> we know how to do it in the That's place. true. That is absolutely so, true. So once we get to that stage, then we'll definitely, you know, be in a better place. Wow. In terms of governance. So. What would you, as a youth leader, now, and you've been a youth leader for as long as I've known you. Yeah. <laughs> for as long as I've known you. <laughs> What lessons have you learned that you would have taught your young self entering high school? Mm. Entering high school. Oh, my, my high school life was exciting. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I was in so many clubs, it wasn't funny. Wow. Anyway, um, to be honest, there, what I would probably do if I was to tell my younger self uh, is to take... Uh, my academics a little bit uh, more seriously. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, I did take it to some extent seriously, but I became so engulfed in, 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 in wanting to serve, in wanting yes. to, 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 to lead that sometimes I, I neglected my studies. Wow. And I think if, 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 that was, if, if that was a point that I would want to, a takeaway I would want to share with my younger self, Yes. That would be it. Uh, just ensuring that there would there was balance, and I think that's why I'm so uh, hard to some extent on my young people. I tell them, listen, mm -hmm. balance. You are first a human being. Wow. Then you are a student. Then you are a leader. Wow, I love that. Right. So back then, I just thought I was a leader. Yes. <laughs> I was a leader. You were just you know, doing. And I, absolutely. So mm -hmm. if I was to tell my younger self, I would say, younger self. Get involved still, but yes. learn to balance, learn to yes. strike a balance, enjoy yourself. I was yes. so passionate about change and, and you know, just mm -hmm. serving that, you know, I, I neglected a lot of, of, of me, you yes. know, and the things I love because I, I wanted to serve. So it's just becoming balanced yes. uh, in what I did. You know, especially awesome. where my academics were concerned, because some of it really suffered because I was overly <laughs> involved. You know, yes, yes. So that would be that would be it. But it was all worth it. I can't complain. Wow, wow, that's wonderful. What recommendations do you have for youth leaders? Three things mm. that they must. Three key recommendations mm. that you have for them. Uh, three key recommendations. Yeah. Uh, as a youth leader, number one, do not fear change. <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh my and I'm gosh. serious. Do not yes. fear change. Number one, because life is always is evolving. Mm -hmm. Life is not static. Like, and I mm. think for many of us, we believe that the same person that we were. 10 years ago, we're going to remain the same person. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, life, no, 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 no. Life is not like that. Life is ever changing and we have to be able to develop that adaptability yes. to move with life. <laughs> so do not fear change. That would be the first thing. Learn to adapt and adjust yourself to the demands of life. Wow. That's number one. Uh, number two, become valuable wow. and, and 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 i realize that many persons want and when i say become valuable 
uh, understand that every one of us, we have that level of uniqueness within us. Mm -hmm. We are unique in our own right. We are not a knockoff, substandard version of someone else. And we have to understand that. And when we start to embrace our uniqueness, we will be able to tap into our value center. Wow. And the value center that we have, that is what causes us to stand out. Right? So I would say, don't fear change. Become valuable. What is it? What area is it that you want to serve in? Seek to know. I wanted to become a motivational speaker. In order to do so, I had to read more. I had to saturate myself with motivational videos, audios, podcasts, you know, just yes. learning from other people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so, so that caused me to add value to my life. When I open my mouth, people actually want to listen. Yes. Because I, 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 I provided them with, with value. You know, and, and value is not giving people what already exists. Value mm -hmm. is giving people what doesn't exist. Yes. It's going above and beyond, you know, mm -hmm. because many persons right now, everybody a motivational speaker. I, mean, I know, right? What causes <laughs> you to stand out from the crowd? Exactly. That is important. And oftentimes what adds to our value is our uniqueness. Yes, absolutely. And number three, I would say number three, I would say, don't be hard on yourself. Wow. Learn to let go of, mm. of failures. Use your failure as a cushion. Use it as mm -hmm. that, 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 as a dirt, you know, to yes. cause you to move out of that hole of, of absolute, as a launching pad. Because mm -hmm. many times, as I would have rightly said earlier, you know, we yes. use failure as that determinant that we are failure. Yes. We are a failure. It's mm -hmm. not. Failure yes. should be looked at from the vantage point of, okay, yes, bam, I learned something new today. Yes, yes. Okay. The better the failure you are, the more inventive you are. Oh, my. Talk Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> don't fear, fa don't fear failure. Yes. Embrace it because it's a critical part of life. And yes. the sooner we literally start to hug up failure, mm -hmm. we will start to understand that we don't need to despise failure. We need to learn from it. Absolutely. Let failure be the per that, that, that thing that speaks to us and teaches us what not to do. Right. And you use and it to let it go. Use absolutely. It and let it go. It and dash it away. Dash yes. it go. Dash it. Absolutely. <laughs> do not carry it forward. Absolutely. <laughs> so learn from it and move on. So that would wow. be it. Uh, don't yeah. fear change, become valuable, yeah. and you are not a failure, even if you fail. Wow. This conversation was so powerful. I'm telling you, it, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, am, I literally feel this thing, this energy, like <laughs> this <Wow>. really <laughs> nice, calm, amazing energy from the conversation. Yeah. Is wow. there anything else you want to say to the person that's lives, listening to this podcast? Anything you want to leave with them? Ah, uh, what can I leave? Uh, I would say strive to be humble every day. Pursue humility every day. Wow. I believe that many times we uh, are we're tempted to become uh, very absorbed in, in our ability and, and how we do things. But we have to ensure that whatever we do, we remain humble. And by humble, I don't mean that you are going to take substandard things, you're going to do substandard things. No. It means understanding that you have been, gift, you have been given a unique gift to do and to be who you are. Mm. And with that groundation, <laughs> we <laughs> can now understand that it's not about us, but yes. it's about the God that placed us here. And so yes. even what I do, people will say, oh, wow, that was awesome. That was excellent. I have to now go back into self and say, thank you, Lord, for the vision. Thank you, Lord, for the ability. 
because we, we, we tend to want to praise the creation many a times mm -hmm. and not acknowledging the creator. The creator. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so so yes. in that, that's why I would say remain humble because mm -hmm. we're tempted. We're human beings. And I won't say that many a times I'm not tempted, but I, I'm very happy that the Holy Spirit at times will rope me back in and say, uh-uh, mm -hmm. remember, mm -hmm. remember who brought you here. Remember who gave you this opportunity and yes. for that i am always mindful and i pray for that mindfulness yes that i'm yes. not here in my own strength i'm yes. not here in my own wisdom before i came on this pod podcast i said lord give me the wisdom wow. to answer the questions to be able to impact someone's life because wow. yes i can come and i can be very eloquent in how mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I speak and in how I deliver, but it can be of null effect on, 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 yes. on, on, on a person's life. I want, when I speak, it transforms and it brings about yes. true, long-lasting change. And that's wow. really one of my mission in life. That's so powerful. just remain humble. Wow, that is powerful. My last question to you, if there's one person who's listening to you right now who yeah. is at the place where you're at, and they're thinking to themselves, okay, I understand she was here, she recognized it, she moved and she came here. Yeah. What's the, the top three steps for dummies? Quote, unquote, dummies. <laughs> if, if, if the person have no clue, how do they get from confusion, lack mm -hmm. of self-awareness, don't know what mm -hmm. is happening to me right now, I'm in chaos, to mm -hmm. clarity? Mm. That's what happened to you. One piece, steps class. one. Yes. Or mm. it doesn't have to be three steps. Any amount of mm. steps. Just what, what right. practical thing, right? All right. So number one, I would say to that person listening right now, uh, one of the things I did is that I maintained a diet of motivation, mental motivation. Uh, I I think it was. Uh, I don't remember the motivation I'll speak about. He said that motivation is like taking a bath. You need it every day. Absolutely. <laughs> many, Absolutely. A time, many a times we think that, oh, I'm going to listen to a motivation, One time. motivational message, <laughs> uh, you know, today. And for the next two weeks, you're off course. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you have <laughs> to do it every day. I became yeah. very intentional about that. If you come into my right. room right now, around my room, so number one, you have to stay motivated. And that's yes. an everyday thing. A part mm -hmm. of my morning routine is not only that I do my devotions, it's not only that I pray and, and read my Bible to hear what the Lord wants to say to me, you know, in setting my day, but I ensure that as soon as I get up from my knees mm -hmm. in prayer, I turn on my my phone or my radio to listen to a motivational message on YouTube. Wow. Whether it be uh, uh, D.D. Jakes, whether it be yes. Terry Savelle Foy, is also someone who helps me. So guys, yeah. Terry Savelle Foy is thebomb.com. Listen, awesome. she's a, she's, she is just the sweetest white lady you will ever find. But I'm telling you, she has some tips and nuggets that really help to transform my life. So mm -hmm. remaining motivated is important and it's an everyday thing. Number two, research the areas that you are falling short in. What are the areas that, you know, affect you, uh, you're struggling with basically. Mm -hmm. uh, I researched that. For example, I would research scriptures in that regard wow. and I would speak them over my life each day. But not nice. only that, I developed strategies encountering those weaknesses you know so i became very intentional because i believe in life in everything that you do you must develop a strategy yes so number one stay motivated mm -hmm. develop a strategy research find out about how you can overcome and that's one of the things that i did and three surround yourself with positive people yes I said earlier i had to chop off Oh, yes. I had to kick away. I always I say transform yourself into your new network. Absolutely. <laughs> I had to literally write down, I wrote down a list of people yes. in my life. And I, 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 I divided them into categories. Mm -hmm. The persons who took from my life, the persons yes. who sowed into my life, and the persons who really don't know why they're in my life. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. And, and I'm telling you, and, and actually that came about when I read the book by Bishop T.D. Jakes, Before yes. You Do. 
he has a, a, a an excellent uh, chapter on on friends. Three types. Friends. Absolutely, <laughs> comrades, the comrades, the, yes, uh -huh. and, and the and the and the confidence. I'm telling you, that <laughs> changed my life. When I read yes. that book, I'm telling you, I mm -hmm. wrote down the three columns and yes. I started to write people down, write people's names mm -hmm. under each column. And I'm telling you, yes. some people that I know did not have any intention in, in impacting my life in any way and I couldn't impact them either. I right. said, listen, this is just a waste of our time. Let, yes. us, go, let us just lose ourselves and move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not like I just said, you know, I'm just going to, uh, no, I just slowly put myself away. As yeah. the song says in Jamaica, follow the rhythm and take away thyself. <laughs> yes. That's what I did. I just, yes. I just slowly started yes. to move away from certain company. I just mm -hmm. started to become more absorbed and, you know, and I started to rap more with people of people yes. who were going somewhere, people who had a vision. Yes. I, I, Two core friends right now i'm telling you if mm -hmm. i ever come to them and tell them something which is beneath my capability yes sir or or <laughs> my, my 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 functionality i am telling you i am going to get some runnings oh my I, goodness I, you're speaking they're about gonna, my life they're go, you they're are gonna run me they're gonna be like listen do you yes, know who sir. you are <laughs> to them with some standard ideas i can't oh, so they keep me yes. and i'm mm -hmm. like i'm telling you i have a friend tamika oh my god tamika hey <laughs> he keeps me on my toes wow like there are sometimes i will say things to her and she's like ruth you hear yourself <laughs> uh -uh, uh -uh. and yes to the point where I'm afraid Raquel to say certain yes. things. I'm like, no. Yes. So she keeps me in check. And I, and I love wow. it. Yes. I love it. Sometimes yes. I would say, boy, it got easy on me. But I love it because it yes. challenges me. Fanning your flames. My best yes. Self. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Because you see, I remember there's a challenge that I often give my clients. The most of my clients, I give this challenge to mm -hmm. abandon everyone in your life. And if you need to reconnect, yeah. you can. And mm -hmm. if you find you can't let everybody go, no matter who it is, mm -hmm. you can't take a, a week or a month or whatever mm -hmm. by yourself, mm -hmm. then you're not ready for change because mm -hmm. you're not yet capable of choosing yourself. Uh, Others are more important than you, um, than you are to yourself. You mm -hmm. must be able to. And you see the person who is for you? Mm. That I allow you to, and they'll be right there sitting waiting for you. Oh, so, I tell you exactly because you see, the thing is, I, if you're not, yes, mm -hmm. go ahead, and they're not intimidated by not your at all. not they're at not all, not intimidated because they're Absolutely. in their own lane. Yes, so many we try to go into other people's lanes, yes, and we become envious, and we become yes. bitter, and we try to compete. Or only competition should be with ourselves, yes, and we confuse our confidence with ah. our comrades ah. and our Absolutely. comrades with our our constitution Absolutely. We, we, our constituency we have to be mm. conscious of those things because mm. the thing is if you are here and the people you have you're in a state of depression mm -hmm. clearly you need to come out of the state you're in mm -hmm. because if you already had what you needed then you wouldn't need anything else wow True. right so if you need there's a quote that says, if you need something, if you want something you've never had, you've got mm -hmm. to do something you've, do never, something done. you've never done. You've Absolutely. Never done. Your conversation was so, I, I'm telling you, I felt like you were telling me about my life. Ah, you don't that. even understand. I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you and I'm like, 2016, me too. And I'm so, ah. like, she is talking about my life. She mm -hmm. is talking about the changes I made. She is wow. talking about me. Wow. I am telling story. you, I'm listening to you and I am like, what's going on inside of me? Uh -huh, I'm like, uh -huh. what's going on? Like, it was so riveting. Uh -huh. It was so wow. riveting. And I'm so thankful to you. And uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I, I want my, my, my listeners to know that you are one of those persons who... I believe, this is my personal opinion, have the capacity and the temerity to really lead. To really mm. lead. Wow. And I'm not just talking based on this conversation because we've worked mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. before. 
Absolutely. So I'm here and, and my podcast is here. Anytime you want to use it, it's, I'm here. Trust me, I'm more than willing to share with you yes. anytime. Absolutely. Raquel. It was my pleasure. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Would you like to leave your contact details or information or anything? You can go right ahead. Sure, sure. Uh, you can follow me on social media, uh, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, it's Ruth underscore on purpose. So it's Ruth underscore on purpose. And you can feel free to send me your emails. Uh, Send me emails uh, based on what I would have said. If there's anything that resonated with you, you can send me an email to Ruth A underscore Lawrence at yahoo.com. That's Ruth A underscore Lawrence at yahoo.com. Wonderful. Thank you so, so, so much. I enjoyed our Thank conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raquel, for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for staying with us and listening to my conversation with Ruth. She was so bubbly and so um, fired up. And and she, throughout the interview, I I just, I I could, there was this energy, this this peaceful, free-flowing energy when, when she was, when we were speaking and and as she spoke about her experiences and her and the advancements and the the life lessons she's learned i'm telling you it, it was just powerful this is a young leader in a developing country that has taken the decision to self reflect to look at herself and to choose to invest in herself and to choose to make the choices and the decisions that benefits herself. She was always lovely and pleasant and just warm. Her conversation with me was so spirited, like, I, I just loved it. So thank you, Ruth, for speaking with me today. If you got nothing from this conversation or if you remember nothing from this conversation, because I'm, I'm sure you got something, because you stayed. <laughs> Three things I'd like to leave with you. If you remember nothing about this podcast, about the conversation, please remember these three things. We're all leaders. Number one, we're all leaders. All of us. You are leading. You are leading someone. Someone is looking at you. You are an example to someone. Be a good example. Be a good leader. Be a mindful leader. That's number one. Right? So be be mindful that you are leading from wherever you are. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. Someone is looking at you. Right? And the fact that you have the potential or you're potentially influencing someone, be mindful of that. You're a leader. Number two. One of the best things you can do for yourself as a leader is to forgive. Forgive the people working below you. Forgive yourself. Forgive your boss. Forgive your parents. Whoever upset you, forgive them. Forgive so that you can lead with a, with a clear heart, a clear mind, and, and, and good energy. The third thing, choose what kind of leader you want to be and be clear about it. Own your truth, represent your truth, speak your truth. It's okay to let people know that, guess what? This is just who I am or who I want to be. This is me. Be confident in who you are. And if you're not confident in who you are, make the changes you need to make so you can be confident, so you can lead effectively. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, so much, so much, so, so, so much for listening and for being here. You could have been so somewhere else. There's so much happening, but you're here listening. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a phenomenal day. I am Satin Brownie, and thank you for listening to Finding Happy Podcast. Goodbye.